Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So after my video, my first video um, about sharing my um, book recommendations with you, I did say that I also wanted to share my sporting autobiography books and in video three I'll also share my sporting psychology books. So the first video that I did was about the sort of spiritual self-help books which have massively helped me over my career and certainly latter in my career where I've gotten to grips with you know more to life than sport and trying to get my life in order in in actual fact helping my squash so this video is a little bit more about inspirational characters role models that have put their stories down into books and ones that I found brilliant I think it's worth saying that this this list could have been 10 15 20 books long I've read so many sporting autobiographies and while there's a couple of books notably missing from this list that would be up there as some of my favourite sporting autobiographies, they didn't make the list in terms of what I wanted to pass on as inspirational stories that actually impacted me either as a person or helped me win squash matches. So books that are missing from this list are, that I loved are um, Andre Agassi's autobiography, Open, Maria Sharapova's was more recent and that was a brilliant book just into the insight and struggles of um, a professional tennis player who travelled from Russia into you know, America and won five Grand Slams. So that was also really interesting. Another book that I definitely want to mention was Steve Backley's book. It was one of the first books that I read that made me aware that there was a mental side to sport that could be impacted. And back in the day, uh, when Steve Backley was trying to break world records, that was definitely something that was not as widely known. And certainly something where if you said you were looking to improve your sports psychology, you were seen to sort of have a weakness there rather than trying to build on what you already have to make it super strong. So that would be up there as one of the books I would recommend as a, as a sporting autobiography if you get the chance. But... The five books that I've picked are um, in front of me here, um, minus one because I actually only have it on Audible and I think I lent the hard copy to someone and then I've forgotten who I've given it to. So what I'm going to do is start with um, the two books that have impacted me the most at tournaments. I'm not going to put these in any order because they're all brilliant. So I've got two books that have impacted me in terms of my results at events. The first one being Chrissy Wellington, A Life Without Limits. So this is a story about a really normal woman who basically decides to go and do Iron Man and ends up being really, really good. So I think the story is inspirational because of how normal she is and because of how amazing she becomes and the story behind that. And what really resonated with me with this book was how hard Iron men women train and the work eth ethic that's behind them i mean an iron man itself can last you know over eight hours so the training that you have to do the overtraining to be able to compete at a, at a brilliant level for that amount of time is quite simply incomprehensible to me and her journey shows um a development of physicality mental mentality listening and giving everything you've got to your coach moving away from home and um, she overcomes all sorts of problems in her life to be the best that she can be and I just wanted to sort of say within this book and this is why I picked this book as an inspirational book because I feel like this this story helped me win tournaments and while reading this book I felt in a place where I could push myself more than I've ever pushed myself before so during during her story she talks about how she can't feel her legs when she's training and competing and how tired she is and how there's a physical numbness there and how do you even overcome that mentally so that that helped me when I was on the court I was literally saying to myself if I can still feel my legs it's all good and you don't know how deep you can push until you're in that place and this book helped me do that and that's why it's on my list so Chrissy Wellington A Life Without Limits the next book that I want to choose um, that impacted me 
while I was playing is the one I haven't got. And um, it's Tyler Hamilton's autobiography, The Secret Race. And for a really similar sort of reason to the Chrissy Wellington book, it inspired me to realize my own physical limits um, a little bit more than I perhaps had done before. And while the story itself is captivating and quite unbelievable at times because it's basically the outing of Lance Armstrong and all of his drug taking um, shenanigans during the Tour de France, that story itself is, is hugely insightful. The story on doping is hugely insightful because I think as most people would always think that if someone takes drugs and someone else takes drugs, then it's a level playing field. So if everyone's taking drugs, then it's a level playing field. And that book made me realize why drugs are so bad and why it is not a level playing field, even if everyone is taking drugs. And I found that massively insightful for someone who has never obviously had anything to do with, with doping or um, being offered any sort of um, advances in that way, let's say. So absolutely loved the book. The reason that it was so insightful into their training, similar sort of thing, ridiculously hard training, long hours. And he actually tells a story about how he ground his back teeth down on a, on a cycling training ride because he was in so much pain. And again, it made me realize my own physical limits and how far away I was from them at that time. So an unbelievable book, can't recommend it enough. That's Tyler Hamilton, The Secret Race. Third book on my list is Murder in the Squash Court by Mr. Squash himself, Jonah Barrington. I mean, this book, as you can see, is completely tattered and I don't actually think you can buy it anymore. And it's a shame it is so tattered, but in the same way, it shows how well used it's been. It's it's on my list because Jonah Barrington is amazing. He's, in a, he's a legend, but at the same time, not only that is he's he's a squash player and he's someone that every squash player wants to look up to and achieve what he achieved and he at a time when he made squash you know what it is today and that's unbelievable his book is divided into separate chapters and each chapter begins with an f and it's fire fitness fastness feel fo force and fiber and flair and i think and faith sorry and I think that, you know, how he talks about each and everything in each chapter as a squash player, how can you not be inspired by that? How can you not be inspired by, again, the work ethic that he put in and how he's talked about every area of the game? And so whether you're a squash player or not, I can't recommend this book enough if you can get your hands on it. Um, and so that's Murder in the Squash Court by Jonah Barrington. The fourth book on my list is uh, by Diana Nyad, if you've heard of her. she Her book called Find A Way, which is annoyingly the book, the name of what I wanted to use for my autobiography. And having read this book, I couldn't possibly steal it because the story that makes Diana so inspirational is the fact that she wanted to become the first person to swim between Cuba and Florida without um, a shark tank around her. Now, as you'll learn in the book, if you give it the time to read, some of the, those waters between Cuba and Florida are some of the most dangerous waters to swim in with the sharks and the box jellyfish. Beside the fact that it actually takes 53 um, consecutive hours of swimming and it's 110 miles. And she actually tried to complete this swim in her 30s and couldn't do it. She just simply couldn't do it. And she gave up on you know what she says was her dream and then came back to it in her 60s. And the story is all about the mental struggle, about tiredness, about swimming in the dark, about swimming in danger, about getting stung by a, a box jellyfish is just unbelievable. The, the stories that she has gone through to achieve her dreams are quite unbelievable. And, and there's also a mention of squash. She used to be a squash player, which is like an added bonus. So this journey is as she says, her own account of a physical, spiritual, emotional, psycho and psychological journey of facing her fears and trying to go after her passions. And that's why this book's on my list, because it's unbelievable. And it's Diana Nyad, Find A Way. The last book on my list is 
Iron War. It's another Iron Man book, but it's a little bit more about rivalries. So it's about two incredible Iron Man athletes that, um, you know, the book is written by Matt Fitzgerald, but the book is is about Dave Scott and Mark Allen and about their rivalry to be Iron Man World Champion. And their continuing battle to try and better each other, the improvements that one makes and the other has to adjust and the constant, you know, pushing each other to be greater athletes because they had each other. And again, just the the unbelievable sessions and everything that they did to be the best that they could be. And if you think as a squash player, you're working hard, the Ironman books are definitely a way for you to think you are not working as hard as you could do. There's more in you and there's more capacity physically and more importantly, mentally. So it's about those guys bettering each other. It's about bettering themselves and, you know, them basically trying to become the world champion while the other was trying to also do the same thing. And it's an, it's a brilliant, brilliant story um, about a rivalry in one of the toughest sports. So that's my book that is the fifth on my list. It's Iron War by Matt Fitzgerald. So they're my five books. Um, obviously, they're all available, I think, on Audible and also on um, you know, Amazon or wherever. And they're five unbelievable books, but also the ones that didn't make the list that are so up there with the three that I described at the beginning that are more than worth a read. So hope you found that insightful and I'll be back with my third video on the psychological books that have helped me improve at my squash. See you soon.